Good afternoon. This is All India Radio. I'm Punita Bakshi and with me is VC Pramod with the Midday News. The headlines. New guidelines for opening up more activities in non-containment zones come into force today. States given flexibility to open schools and colleges. Cinema halls and multiplexes to open with 50% capacity from the 15th of this month. In Bihar, notification for the first phase of state assembly elections issued today. Nominations begin for 71 constituencies. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju says Farm Act will prove to be instrumental in the lives of farmers and the government is committed to double their income. India lambays Pakistan for fomenting a fake narrative against the country at the World Forum, says it cannot rectify Pakistan's dubious human rights record. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 83.53% and in IPL cricket, Kings Eleven Punjab to take on Mumbai Indians in Abu Dhabi this evening. In our special series on the occasion of the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi, we begin this bulletin with Bapu Ki Baat. In a post-prayer speech, Mahatma Gandhi spoke about bribery, saying it hinders the country from moving forward. Home Ministry has issued new guidelines for opening up of more activities in areas outside the containment zones. These guidelines, which come into effect from today, further extend the process of reopening of several activities in the country. Starting today, states and union territories have been directed not to impose any local lockdown outside containment zones without prior consultation with the central government. There will also be no restriction on interstate and intrastate movement of goods and persons as well. All activities have been permitted outside containment zones, barring international travel of passengers, except as permitted by Home Ministry. Our correspondent has filed this report. Under the new guidelines, cinema halls and theatres have been allowed to reopen with 50% capacity starting from 15th October. B2B exhibitions, swimming pool for training purposes have also been allowed with strict compliance to the guidelines to be issued by ministries concerned. In a major relaxation, states and union territories have been empowered to further relax gathering of people beyond 100 in number. Postgraduate students of science stream and research scholars studying in universities and central institutions will also be able to get back to their classrooms after nod from the authorities concerned. Decision regarding reopening of schools after 15th of this month has been left to the state governments with clear instructions to continue with online classes as the preferred mode. With Deependra, Anand Chaturvedi, AIR News, Delhi. Home Ministry has informed that strict lockdown will however continue in all the containment zones in the country till the 31st of October. The national directives regarding maintaining adequate physical distancing at marketplaces and gatherings will also remain effective. Persons above 65 years of age, people with comorbidities, pregnant women and children below the age of 10 years have been advised to stay at home. Government has also urged to continue encouraging usage of Arogya Setu app. In Bihar, the Election Commission team led by Chief Election Commissioner Sunil Arora is holding a high-level meeting in Bodhgaya on the last leg of his three-day visit to review preparedness of assembly elections in the state. District election officer come district magistrates and superintendents of police of 12 districts are present in the meeting. Before leaving for Delhi, the Chief Election Commissioner will hold a meeting with State Chief Secretary, Principal Home Secretary and DGP in Patna. More from our correspondent. 
The election commission team took stock of preparedness of three phase elections in the state on Wednesday. The chief election commissioner directed district election officers and nodal officers to ensure compliance of COVID-19 guidelines to protect poll personnel, security personnel and voters. The team also held meeting with major political parties of the state and noted their suggestions about corona and crowd management during the polls. In the meeting with nodal officers of different enforcement agencies, the team instructed to maintain tight vigil to curb movement of black money, liquor and arms. For this, instruction was issued to escalate vehicle checking and alertness on the check post. Dharmendra Kumar Rai, AIR News, Patna. Meanwhile, dissatisfied over the action plan of preventive measures and gross inadequate preparedness of the excise department, the election commission has removed state excise commissioner B. Kartikeya Dhanji from the post. Youth Affairs and Sports Minister Kiran Vijayju has said that the government is committed for the welfare of farmers and double their income. He said farm acts by the parliament will prove to be instrumental in the lives of farmers. Addressing media persons in Itanagar today, he said the farm acts will provide freedom to the farmers to sell their produce anywhere in the country. The minister said this will also facilitate easy payment and intrastate supply. <laughs> कोई भी ट्रेडर के साथ कोई भी कंपनी के साथ किसी भी इंडिविजुअल के साथ आप डायरेक्ट एग्रीमेंट कर सकते हैं दो तीन दिन के अंदर में आपको पेमेंट करना ही करना है ये कानून में एक्ट में प्रावधान रखा गया है और इसमें जैसे कि बोमदिला से आलू लगाने वाला इटानगर में सेल कर सकता है पासीघाट में चावल लगाने वाला कुरुंगकुमे में चावल बेच सकता है तो इसमें टोटल इंट्रा स्टेट और इंटर स्टेट कोई टैक्स नहीं लगेगा ये आप जब देखेंगे इतना बड़ा आपको प्रावधान आपके सामने में रखा है कि फार्मर्स के लिए तो बहुत ही फायदा है द मिनिस्टर ऑल्सो लॉर्डेड प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदीज लीडरशिप इन द फाइट अगेंस्ट कोरोना ही सेड प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज टेकन द राइट स्टेप एट द राइट टाइम टू कर्व द स्प्रेड ऑफ द वायरस India has lambasted at Pakistan for fomenting a fake narrative against India at the World Forum. At the United Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, India exercised the right of reply to the statement made by Pakistan yesterday. India's first secretary at the UN Permanent Mission in Geneva, Pavan Badhe, said that resorting to abusive and unacceptable language against India cannot rectify Pakistan's dubious human rights record. He said that no fabricated words against India is going to change the fact that Pakistan and territories under its control are death traps for journalists. human rights defenders social activists and religious and ethnic minorities in his statement he added that perennial india bashing project of pakistan in the un system is also not going to change the fact that hundreds of journalists and human rights defenders die each year in pakistan due to systematic killings including extra judicial ones when it comes to accountability and justice for oppressing those standing for their rights The pathetic state of affairs for journalists and human rights defenders is well known when the deep state could make prominent journalists disappear in broad daylight at the heart of Pakistan. We are not baffled that Pakistan does well when it comes to inciting hatred against religious minorities and targeting our leadership with hate speeches. Its well cherished and inherited culture of hatred makes it the perfect candidate for carrying forward the legacy of intolerance against anybody having modern views on human rights. Taking a dig at Pakistan's historically poor record on human rights and democratic values, India said that while the world has progressed well, Pakistan is still at the crossroads to understand the real meaning of modern laws, democracy and human rights. In Bihar, notification for the first phase of assembly elections was issued today. With this, the process of filing of nominations by candidates had started. In the first phase, polling for 71 assembly constituencies spread over 16 districts will be held on the 28th of October. Last date for filing of nominations is the 8th of this month and scrutiny would take place on the 9th of October. Last date of withdrawal of candidature will be the 12th of October. In this phase, the 71 assembly segments of Gaya, Nevada, Aurangabad, Jamui, Rohtas, Kaimur, Patna, Bhagalpur, Banka, Munger, Lakhi Sarai, Sheikhpura, Bhojpur, Baksar, Arwal and Jahanabad districts would go to the polls. Most of these poll-bound constituencies are naturally affected and sensitive from security point of view. 
In view of COVID-19 pandemic, the Election Commission has, for the first time, given option of online filing of nomination papers to the candidates. This can be done through portals of Chief Electoral Officer or their respective District Election Commission officers. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will inaugurate Atal Tunnel, Rotang, on the 3rd of October. It is the longest highway tunnel in the world. The 9.02 km long tunnel connects Manali to Lahol Spiti Valley throughout the year. Earlier, the valley was cut off for about six months each year, owing to heavy, rain, heavy snowfall. The tunnel is built with ultra-modern specifications in the Peer Panjal range of Himalayas at an altitude of 3,000 meters from the mean sea level. It reduces the road distance by 46 kilometers between Manali and Leh and the time by about 4 to 5 hours. Environment, Forest and Climate Change Minister Prakas Zavadekar today said that the number of good air days are continuously increasing and the bad air days are decreasing in the pollution-affected states. The minister said good air days have increased to 182 from 108 days during the last four years due to the coordinated steps taken by the centre and the states. He said stubble burning is one of the cause of the pollution and the centre has provided machines for burning the stubble. He added that trials will be done on the new decomposer machine developed by the Indian Council of Agricultural Research for decomposing the stubble. केंद्र सरकार ने पराली जलाने के लिए मशीन दिए हैं आईसीएआर यह भारत सरकार की कृषि संशोधन की जो संस्था है काउंसिल है तो पुसा संस्था के द्वारा एक डीकंपोजर का नया शोध भी किया है इसकी भी ट्रायल सभी राज्यों में इस साल होगी क्योंकि हजारों एकड़ पर इस तरह की ट्रायल होके उसके परिणाम आएंगे तो अगली साल और बढ़त मिलेगी Mr. Zavadekar was speaking with the media after the meeting held with the environment ministers and officials of Delhi, Haryana, Punjab, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. The meeting was held to discuss the action plans for the various agencies for controlling the pollution level in these states. He urged the people to give their support in the fight against pollution which will be continued in the upcoming days. Listing out the various initiatives taken by the union government to reduce the pollution level, Mr. Zavadekar said, Peripheral Expressway, Bio-CNG, Bio-Power and Waste Management rules have played an instrumental role in curbing the pollution level. Education Minister Ramesh Pokhriyal Nishank has said that the implementation plan of the National Education Policy 2020 is under preparation with due consultation and various stakeholders. He said the implementation will be carried out as per the timelines envisaged in the policy. Responding to queries of the students through Twitter today, the minister said, multidisciplinary and hood education will be introduced phase-wise. He said national education policy has put great emphasis on the use of technology and online education for children. He added that online platforms such as Swayam Prabha and Diksha will be expanded in the future. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has urged the people to participate in the My NEP competition to become a part of the educational transformation of India. In a tweet today, Mr. Modi said this competition is an interesting way of sharing unique aspects about the National Education Policy 2020. You are listening to the Midday News on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. New guidelines for opening up more activities in non-containment zones come into force today. States given flexibility to open schools and colleges, cinema halls and multiplexes to open with 50% capacity from the 15th of this month. In Bihar, notification for the first phase of state assembly elections issued today. Nominations begin for 71 constituencies. Union Minister Kiran Rijeju says, Farm Acts will prove to be instrumental in the lives of farmers and the government is committed to double their income. India lambasts Pakistan for fomenting a fake narrative against the country at the World Forum, says it cannot rectify Pakistan's dubious human rights record. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 83.53% and in IPL cricket, Kings Eleven Punjab to take on Mumbai Indians in Abu Zabi this evening. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. All India Radio presents Northeast Diary. Glimpses of the news of the week from the northeastern states. All about the region, a gateway to Southeast Asia. The developments and the destinations to look forward to. 
news from the art, cultural and entertainment world of the northeastern states of India. All this and more every Thursday, 5.30 to 6 p.m. in the evening on 100.1 All India Radio FM News Channel. Environment Minister Prakash Javdekar has said that India aims to restore 26 million hectares of degraded and deforested land and achieve land degradation neutrality by the year 2030. He said this is a target which shows our ambition. He was addressing the UN Summit on Biodiversity. With only 2.5% of Earth's landmass, we have 8% of world's recorded biodiversity. In the course of last decade, India has enhanced the combined forest and tree cover by 15,000 square kilometers to reach nearly 25%. We now have the highest number of tigers, the Asiatic lions, and we have also launched Project Dolphins. Mr. Javrekar said India has a culture of not just protecting and conserving the nature, but living in harmony with nature. Government today said that the country's recovery rate among the COVID-19 patients has reached to 83.53%. During the last 24 hours, more than 85,000 COVID patients have recovered. Health Ministry says the total number of recoveries has reached over 52,73,000. The constantly increasing recoveries have ensured that the actual caseload of the country has reduced and currently comprises only 14.90% of the total positive cases. India's COVID-19 tally has crossed 63 lakh, with 86,821 new infections being reported in a day. Presently, the total number of active cases in the country is 9,40,000. The ministry said effective implementation of centre's strategic and graded test, track, treat approach has led to higher recoveries and lower fertility. Currently, India's case fertility rate is at 1.56%, which is one of the lowest globally. The recovery rate of COVID patients in Delhi stands at 88.46%. The city recorded recovery of 3,965 patients in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of recovered patients till date to 2,47,446. With increased testing, the city has achieved the remarkable mark of conducting 1,62,103 corona tests per million of its population. A total of 3,390 new confirmed cases of coronavirus were reported in the national capital during the last 24 hours. With this, the total number of COVID cases in the city has reached 2,79,715. Uttar Pradesh has achieved another landmark in testing of COVID samples by becoming the first state in the country to undertake over one crore tests to screen coronavirus. Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath termed it as a great achievement and said that government has conducted 1.5 lakh tests per day for the past 45 days. More in this report. As on yesterday, the total number of tests conducted in the state stood at 1 crore 98,896 as per the official data released by the State Medical Education Department. Of these, nearly 42% of tests were done through the RT-PCR method. UP share in the total tests conducted in the country now stands at more than 13%. State's daily average of testing over the past few days has been 1.5 lakh tests. Secretary to CM Alok Kumar said that the state reached this milestone while maintaining the positivity rate around 4%. There is also a significant decline trend in infection and mortality numbers in the state. A significant decrease of 25% in active cases has been achieved by the state in last 10 days. Recovery rate of patients has also increased to 85.50% which is more than national average. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In Maharashtra, Nagpur Municipal Corporation has started mobile COVID test centers in order to stop the spread of coronavirus in the city. The fleet of 12 buses and civic bus transport facility are converted into swab collection centers where a doctor, nursing and sanitary staff will be deployed. The vehicle will visit each zone of the city for aggressive testing. These buses were flagged off yesterday at the hands of Mayor Sandeep Joshi and NNC Commissioner B. Radha Krishnan. Under the My Family, My Responsibility campaign launched by the state government, 
health survey of citizens in Nagpur is underway and these mobile covid testing labs will play an important role in identification of such patients Telangana reported 2214 fresh covid-19 cases during the past 24 hours taking the number of cases reported so far in the state to 193600 The state conducted over 54,000 tests yesterday. The recovery rate also slightly improved to 84.4%, with 2,474 more people recovering yesterday. This took the number of recovered people so far in the state to 1,63,407. In Mizoram, 31 more coronavirus cases have been detected during the past 24 hours. With this, the total number of COVID-19 cases has gone up to 2,017 in the state. According to the official statement, so far 1,597 patients have been discharged after recovery, while 420 patients are presently undergoing treatment. Directorate General of Civil Aviation (DGCA) has extended till October 31st the suspension of scheduled international commercial passenger services to and from India. However, international cargo flights and passenger flights approved by the government will continue. DGCA said international scheduled flights may be allowed on selected routes on case-to-case basis. The announcement comes after Home Ministry issued fresh guidelines under the Unlock 5 plan in which it mentioned that international air travel of passengers will not be permitted in the current phase of unlock except as permitted by the government. In Madhya Pradesh, online classes have started in government colleges related to higher education department from today. At the same time as per the new guidelines, possibility of regular studies in schools and colleges has increased. About 7 lakh students are being included in this exercise of the higher education department. The department has assigned command to 7 senior officers to supervise online classes. Random checking up classes will also be done. Principals have been instructed that in October one unit of each subject will have to be completed. The concerned subjects teacher will have to provide mobile numbers of regular students so that they can solve students problem online by forming a group. The professors who are coming to college will take classes from college campus and professors who are at home will take classes from home. Online links of all classes will remain with the principal. Sanjeev Sharma AIR News Bhopal. According to the latest data released by the National Crime Records Bureau (NCRB), Mumbai recorded 6,519 cases, after National Capital Delhi had 12,902 cases during the year 2019. However, there has been a drop of 1.5 percent in crimes in Maharashtra. In the year 2019, the state recorded 3.41 lakh cases, down from 3.46 lakh in the previous year. More from our correspondent. The National Crime Records Bureau (NCRB) data has revealed that overall crime cases against women in Mumbai in the last two years have been 6,058 and 5,453, respectively. Sadly, the city has ranked first in cases of insult to women's modesty at 575, while Delhi is second at 456 cases. Mumbai also has the highest number of sexual harassment incidents on public transport and has recorded the highest number of cases for use of children in pornography. The financial capital also ranked third on the list of rape cases after Delhi and Jaipur. As for the cyber crimes, the NCRB data reveals that Mumbai for the third consecutive year has stood second on the list after Bengaluru. Bengaluru is way ahead with 10,555 cases, while Mumbai is at 2,527 cases. Sonali Ghadar Patil, AIR News, Mumbai. A fake form of Beti Bachao Beti Padhao scheme is doing the rounds on social media, in which it is being claimed that two lakh rupees will be given to all daughters. In a tweet, Press Information Bureau said the distribution of any such form is illegal and no cash incentive is given under the scheme. The New Services Division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program today will bring you a special discussion program on COVID-19. Dr. Lieutenant General Ved Chaturvedi, rheumatologist, Sir Ganga Ram Hospital will participate in the discussion. Listeners can ask questions to the experts on toll-free telephone number 1-800-115767. I repeat, 1-800-115767. One can also ask questions on telephone number 011-2331-4444. I 
I repeat, 011-2331-4444. And post queries on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts by hashtag AskAIR. India and China have agreed to sincerely implement the agreement between the foreign ministers of the two countries in order to ensure disengagement at all the friction points along the line of actual control, LAC. The 19th meeting of the Working Mechanism for Consultation and Coordination on India-China Border Affairs, WMCC, which was held yesterday in virtual mode and was attended by delegations from both the sides, reviewed the current situation along the LAC in the India-China border areas. Now let us take a look at the weather update for the day. The national capital Delhi will have strong surface winds during daytime. The minimum temperature was recorded at 22 degrees Celsius and the maximum is expected to be around 36 degrees. Mumbai will have partly cloudy sky. The minimum temperature was 27 degrees Celsius and the maximum will be around 33 degrees. Chennai will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. The minimum temperature was 25 degrees Celsius and the maximum is likely to be around 33 degrees Celsius. Kolkata will have partly cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. The minimum temperature in the city was 27 degrees Celsius while the maximum is expected to be around 35 degrees. In the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature in Jammu was 19 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be around 35 degrees. The city will have mainly clear sky. In Srinagar, the minimum temperature was around 7 degrees Celsius, while the maximum will be around 28 degrees. Ladakh will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature recorded was 1 degree Celsius, while the maximum is likely to be around 21 degrees Celsius. Gilgit will have partly cloudy sky with possibility of rain or thunderstorm or dust storm. The minimum temperature was 9 degrees Celsius, and the maximum is likely to be around 25 degrees. Muzaffarabad will have mainly clear sky. The minimum temperature was 14 degrees Celsius and the maximum is likely to be around 32 degrees. In IPL cricket, Kings XI Punjab will take on Mumbai Indians in Abu Zabi today. The match will begin at 7.30 p.m. In yesterday's clash, Kolkata Knight Riders beat Rajasthan Royals by 37 runs in Dubai. Rajasthan Royals RR were restricted to 137 for 9 in 20 overs after being handed a target of 175. All-rounder Tom Curran, 54, was the highest run scorer with none of the other batsmen able to make an impact. Shivam Mavi, Kamlesh Nagarkoti and Varun Chakravarti accounted for two dismissals apiece. Shivam Mavi was adjudged the man of the match. In French Open tennis, an injured Achilles heel cut short Serena Williams' latest bid for a 24th Grand Slam title before her second round match yesterday. Williams hurt herself during her semi-final loss at the US Open three weeks ago and said she hasn't had enough time to properly heal. The sudden announcement came roughly an hour before the 39-year-old American was supposed to head out into court Philip Cartier to face Svetsana Pirankova. And now the headlines once again. New guidelines for opening up more activities in non-containment zones come into force today. States given flexibility to open schools and colleges, cinema halls and multiplexes to open with 50% capacity from the 15th of this month. In Bihar, notification for the first phase of state assembly elections issued today. Nominations begin for 71 constituencies. Union Minister Kiran Rijiju says farm acts will prove to be instrumental in the lives of farmers and the government is committed to double their income. India lambastes Pakistan for fomenting a fake narrative against the country at the World Forum, says it cannot rectify Pakistan's dubious human rights record. COVID-19 recovery rate reaches 83.53% and in IPL cricket, Kings XI Punjab to take on Mumbai Indians in Abu Dhabi this evening. And at the end of the bulletin, we leave you with Bapu's favourite bhajan, Vaishnav Janto, sung by an artist from Australia.
Just let it all go. Come on, let it go. 